Hey guys, how's it going? So today we're actually going in the field and checking out a couple properties and I'm gonna take you guys with me. So the thing about the both properties, I'm not exactly sure if they get a workout. Most of the time I actually wouldn't really go check out this kind of properties because I try not to waste my time on the properties I'm not sure on. But for the purpose of this video, we're gonna check it out and see if they might be a deal. I might be completely wrong and this could be two great deals that we'll, I'll be working on today. Uh, but I'll take you guys with me and let's go check it out. All right guys, let me tell you a little more about the properties we're about to check out. So uh, the first one is gonna be the vacant land. It's not in the neighborhood that I normally buy in. That's why I'm not like incredibly excited about it, but it's near the neighborhood I always buy in. So I think, in my opinion, I may not find an investor who might buy it, but I may have a retail buyer that might be interested in buying the property. If you deal with vacant land, what I have noticed is that, yes, there's a lot of vacant land that investors, builders want to buy, and those are more particularly in the bigger cities around when there's new constructions going on and stuff like that. But when you get a little bit more to the countryside, uh, the, your potential buyer most likely will be a retail buyer. And the way I find my retail buyers, and I have mentioned this before, is that I actually find them on uh, Facebook Marketplace. That's my go-to. I mean, you could also do Craigslist, I guess. Um, I haven't tried it. I may try it with this one. But Facebook Marketplace has been a great um, way for me to find retail buyers. The thing I noticed about this vacant land, which is kind of odd, and I guess we'll get a figure out when we get there, According to the Google picture, somebody put a fence around that vacant land and not only that lot, but the lot next to it. So somebody who owns the lot next to it probably was like, oh, this guy that owns the lot next to me isn't doing anything with it. I'm just going to put a fence over, all over it. And that's a no-no. I mean, like, obviously that's not his property to do anything with it. Another thing that I'm uncomfortable on with this one is that I'm not really sure if it's going to be a problem. I mean, yes, he legally doesn't have any rights to the property, the person that put the fence around it. But I'm just curious to know what happened, who has the fence around him, why is that there? Uh, maybe, you know, maybe I'll be lucky enough to see the owner of the other lot there. I doubt it, it's just a vacant lot, there's no home next to it. That's why I also wanted to check it out. It's not like a simple property that I could see, everything was great on Google Pictures. Uh, it's a little bit more complicated as well. So the thing with mobile home, it actually is on property appraiser it only shows about 950 square feet which is not like big for a mobile home I mean it's a pretty okay size like I guess I've seen smaller mobile homes but that's a pretty standard I, I would say I think that would be a single wide if I'm not mistaken I might be wrong don't quote me there so what the seller told me the seller told me he actually added more stuff to it and he said that it's a, over 2,000 square feet right now so it could be a double-edged sword as well if it is 2200 square feet like he's saying it is this might be a really good deal because according to him he doesn't need a lot of fixing he get everything done he's great uh you know and you know the price he wants is about the price that uh, I would like to sell it to an investor. So if I cannot come down, you know, 10, 15 grand, maybe I can make some money on that as well. But the problem with it is that I really hope that he did all the additions legally. Uh, and the property appraiser, when, when an appraiser comes out to that property, I hope they actually will be able to not, I, I wouldn't say notice, but I would, they would be able to qualify that property as 2,200 square feet based on what he said it is. Like I said, I looked at Google Pictures and it does seem like to be much bigger than other properties in the area. Like there's a property two houses down and it's 2,000 square feet and it looks smaller than his house. So I think he's not lying about the actual square footage. I think I'm not certain that the property appraiser will appraise this property for 2,200 square feet. So yeah, so those are the two properties we're checking out today. I guess we'll see how it goes. Um, I haven't been in the field in a week or so. I go check out properties once in a while whenever I think it's a good deal. Uh, the other day, probably I would say a week and a half ago, I went to check a mobile home that I wasn't sure about. This I wasn't sure about it either. I was like, ah, maybe it's a good deal, maybe it's not, but I'll go check it out. And right now it's under contract already assigned to a buyer. Hopefully that works out. A closing should be in a couple weeks. That's why I like doing wholesaling in-state or in what they call it in your backyard. 
is because I have this possibility to go check out the properties. I have this possibility to meet with the sellers in person, uh, build credibility. Um, I do enjoy that much more than actually doing virtual wholesaling. And a lot of my properties I have wholesaled virtually. I literally have never uh, seen the sellers, met the sellers, anything like that. Like literally, I've never even been to, I just wholesaled the land in Ocala not so long ago and I've never really been to Ocala, and I never really met the seller. And I've talked to him on the phone two times, and maybe we texted maybe 15 text messages besides that. And that's it, and that's all it's been, and he got his money, I got my money, we walked away, everything's great. But what I'm saying is that I like to wholesale my backyard much more, it is enjoyable, uh, but I think both options do work. I guess it's just a personal preference, especially since I have the ability to do it in my backyard. A lot of people don't because uh, what states they live in, how busy it is, how good of a um, market it is. All right, guys, let's check out this vacant land. Let's see how it looks. All right, guys, so... Um, I went to check out the property, right? And the property, this is an interesting situation. So the property is actually taken illegally, I guess, by someone who owns a lot next to it. So when I was saying to you guys earlier, on the Google pictures, it looks like there's a fence around it. What it looks like, there's actually not, known, not only a fence now, but there's like farm animals on the property. I attached a couple pictures right now you guys see it on the screen so what I did is actually I knocked on the door next to it and I said hey do you know who owns this property and a lot of times that's a really good way to figure out who owns the property and it happens to be that the person that lives next to the property is actually the that guy's sister so I talked to her for probably about 10-15 minutes and you know she told me all about her their life story and whatnot and they um, she said that he just assumed that was his and I was like well you don't really assume that's your lot I was like I was like I'm buying it I'll sell it to him if he wants to but you know I was like there's no way I talked to the seller and I explained to him the situation and he said oh well my wife is a real estate attorney she will help me out so it's nothing new you know we'll figure it out I was like okay sure so I guess we'll see how it goes I'm about I'm getting gas obviously thumbs up for horrible gas prices uh, and then I'll head out to uh, the mobile home. Yeah, so we went to check out the mobile home. I went to check out the mobile home. And um, I don't know, I'm not too excited about it, I guess. Um, I'll be putting some pictures right now you guys should be seeing on the screen. Um, so when you add something to a house, you're technically supposed to pull permits from the county, city or whatever. And he didn't pull any permits. So, I don't know if I really want to mess with this. Even though at the end of the day, I wouldn't be the one buying the mobile home or whatever, obviously. But the investor may have so many questions, may want the property to get inspected. And this guy does not want his property to be inspected before he sells. He thinks that the, the inspector will give him a citation, which is most likely what will happen. Um, so that's a kind of a problem for for, for the investor and obviously for me so I don't know if I'm even going to try I mean he wants what the price that he wants I would be able to give to him if it was for um, if everything was done correctly and everything was done right but with this one I mean he did do a lot of stuff like you know big things like roof electric and plumbing and all that stuff is in great shape and uh, and stuff like that. It really needs basically cosmetics, uh, which is not you know, uh, which is fine, but it's really not great. I'm not too excited about it. I had that feeling when I was going out to the property, but you never know. I think it's worth to check out the property sometime and just see where it takes you. Uh, but at this point, I'm probably not gonna go through with this deal. The other deal, the land, I am going to try to figure it out. I talked to the seller already. They're going to be trying to send a mail to the, this person and whatever, certified mail. But now I've been out for, I've been out writing this stuff for the past three hours or so. Um, it's about time I get back in front of the computer and uh, get some more deals today. All right, guys, I'm back to the home base and uh, I'm working on other stuff right now. 
I don't know. I've been thinking about this couple of deals. I don't know if they're gonna work out, but it's interesting that both the properties that we're gonna go check it out today, they both had some unusual issues. You don't really see people adding stuff to the house without a permit permits. It doesn't happen often. It does happen, but it's not often. And you don't see people taking over other people's land with no questions, not just taking it over, just like it's theirs. So that doesn't happen often, but it's interesting that both of the properties today were with certain problems. Um, thanks, I appreciate everyone for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Please leave a like. Comment down below if you actually want more content like this that I go out in the field and I show more properties that I take a look at. And then uh, subscribe to the channel if you did enjoy it. I really appreciate all of you guys and peace.